It's time now for the latest in local news and the news the vote is in. And the Wayne County Registered Voters passed the County's Plus 5 referendum, which will continue the one cent penny tax for the next six years. The vote count reads as follows 2,216 voted yes, while 1,175 voted no. Less than 20% of the registered voters in Wayne County took time to vote on the referendum. 3,426 out of 17,727 registered voters voted in the referendum. That's a 19.33% for the turnout. The vote is good news for the county of Wayne and the cities of Jessup, Odom, and Scriven, who will be able to provide services and do major projects that are on the referendum. After the votes were in, the referendum passed. We talked with County Administrator Paul Drotty. Here, County Administrator Paul Drotty, this loss passes, and that's the good news. Uh, now the county can look forward to getting the money rolling in, continue to roll in, and uh, look forward to those projects. Absolutely, Bob. We're super excited about it. Um, I first just want to thank all the voters that did come out and um, support this this endeavor. Um, I, you know, I'd obviously be remiss if I didn't thank the Wayne County Chamber. Those folks were just unbelievable. Mark Watson, Dina Bennett, and Kara Lopez. I mean, they just went above and beyond to do the things we couldn't do at the county where we got the information out. You know, they kind of stepped forward and they put the, you know, they made a bunch of videos, put them out. Um, they did brochures for us and then and also hosted the public forum that we had. So I just I really appreciate all the work the Wayne County Chamber did. And I'm just excited about the Splice Pass. And I mean, my job's going to get busier starting first thing in the morning. Um, we'll probably start looking at um, getting some requests for proposals out on these three projects. Because there's a lot of work that's got to be done between now and before we ever stick a shovel in the ground. So, um, but look, we, we couldn't do any of this without the voters of Wayne County and without them coming forward and saying, yes, um, we see what your plan is, we like your plan, and we think this is good for Wayne County. Well, the good news, fortunately, the majority of those who voted saw the need for this loss. Again, it's been on the books for quite some time. So, as we mentioned, just a continuation of the penny. They said one cent makes sense. So, uh, Again, congrats on the county. You know, anytime you put a referendum on there, you never know how the voters are going to vote. So the good news is the message got out and the majority voted for it. And so congratulations. No, listen, I, I, and I, I can't thank the radio enough and also the newspaper for helping us get that information out there because you're absolutely right. It, I mean, they, the voters are the ones that had to make this decision. It was all up to them. But we had a job to make sure and get the proper information out there. And we're going to continue to do that. I mean, as we move forward with this new splice, we're going to continue to try to stay as transparent as we can and show folks where we're spending their money. Okay, Paul, thanks. All right, thank you, Bob. And once again, those comments of County Minister DePaul Drotty after the vote count was in. Again, the vote count, 2,216 vote yes, 1,175 vote no. In the Georgia presidential primary here in Wayne County, on the Republican ballot, Donald Trump received 2,698 votes. Nikki Haley, who has since dropped out, received 232 votes in Wayne County. On the Democratic side, President Joe Biden received 375 votes. Wayne County Superior Court in session Tuesday morning with the Honorable Judge Burt Guy on the bench in what was scheduled as an immunity hearing for Defendant Michael Brandon Carter, age 44, who was charged with a malice and felony murder in the January 26, 2022 shooting death of his father, Teddy Carter. Instead, after hours of negotiating a plea deal, Carter pleads guilty to a lesser charge of voluntary manslaughter yesterday, receives a 15-year sentence with the first seven to be served in prison. He must turn himself into law enforcement by the date of June 30th of this year. Evidence presented to the judge revealed that both men that day were drinking. They also mentioned an abusive relationship between the two. Once again, the judge accepts the plea agreement on Tuesday morning. Michael Brandon Carter pleads guilty to voluntary manslaughter. Is sentenced to 15 years, the first seven to be served in prison. Again, he has until June 30th to get his affairs in order, and on that date must turn himself into law enforcement to be transferred to prison to begin serving his life sentence or is 15 years since seven in prison. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. In other news, Justice City Commissioners ended that three-day retreat on Tuesday. Tuesday session was held yesterday at City Hall. An executive session began the meeting. It was held to overlook the applicants for the full-time city manager position, and after the executive session, an announcement was made that only one candidate remains for consideration for the full-time position. That's interim city manager Nick Ellis. They state Mr. Ellis has served as interim since January this year. The city also announced yesterday that the other three applicants simply withdrew their application for consideration. The board will now take 14 days, as required by state law, to consider the remaining candidate before making a final decision. Once again, Nick Ellis on his way to be named the full-time city manager. In other news from the retreat, the city met with all department heads on Tuesday. 
One motion made yesterday by Pam Schumann and second by Perry Morgan and voted on unanimously, and that is that the city will put funds in their budget at budget time to fund a full-time downtown director. It's been a part-time position for quite some time. DDA asked that the city strongly consider a full-time director. At Tuesday's meeting, commissioners and the mayor agreed that the city will benefit from a full-time DDA director. Once again, the motion passed unanimously, and soon the city will begin advertising for that full-time position. And again, they hope to fund the position in their city budget. Wayne County School Board met yesterday. Personnel, a big part of the agenda. Again, they did approve the new football coach. We'll have more on that in sports. But John Moore, Wayne County High School football coach and assistant AD, approved last night by the board. One other certified recommendation, Jeffrey Catino, central office. Certified transfers, Virginia Barrow from Jessup Elementary to Martha Rawls Smith Elementary. Tanya Dees from Martha Rawls Smith Elementary to Martha Puckett Middle School. Selena Robbins from Martha Puck Middle School to Wayne County High School. Certified resignations, Alicia Hendricks retiring from Martha Rawls Smith Elementary. Danielle Huckabee, Odom Elementary. Brianna Lunsbury, Martha Rawls Smith Elementary. Sharon Spradley, Martha Puck Middle School retiring. Ren Woodard, Jessup Elementary School. Gracie Yoder, James E. Bacon Elementary. Classified recommendations, Kiva Jackson Transportation. Jonah Schultz, Martha Puck Middle School. Cody Tyre Transportation. Classified resignations, Melissa Bozeman, Martha Raw Smith Elementary, Ashley Harris, Martha Puck Middle School, Kathy Smith, Martha Puck Middle School, retiring, Christy Cernsey, Odom Elementary School, retiring, Rebecca Thornton, Central Office, and Shay Watson, Jessup Elementary. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor, the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final news news, Wayne County Historical, Wayne County Historical Society meets tomorrow night at Captain Joe's Seafood Restaurant, the Meeting begins at 7. Dutch Street Meal precedes the meeting at 6 p.m. Visitors are welcome. Guest speakers will be Bill and Virginia Garland, who will present on the 79th anniversary of one of the most historic naval events in World War II. The USS, the USS Benjamin Franklin, the most damaged U.S. ship to return to its home port under its own power. Dr. Garland, who teaches business and leadership at the Coastal College of Georgia in Brunswick, has done extensive research on the survival of the aircraft carrier and Virginia's dad, Stokes, all Britain, and Jessup survived the attack. It was one of 704 sailors who brought the ship home from the Pacific. Robinson represent a multimedia account and actual air artifacts to describe the events as seen through the eyes of the Wayne County sailor who lived through the attack and its aftermath. Also, society member Derby Waters have copies of his book on Wayne County history available. All that taking place tomorrow night at Captain Joe's Seafood Restaurant. Beta Club of Scriven sponsoring a bingo night tomorrow night at the school cafeteria from 5.30 to 8 p.m., on Thursday, March the 14th, tickets are $30 in advance, $40 the day of the event at the door, 10 rounds of bingo, a lot of cash prizes. Need more information, contact the school office at 912-579-2261. And the Wayne County Board of Tourism getting ready for two big events coming up in the warm weather, the 2024 Altamont River Run scheduled for April 13th and the second annual Jessup Porch Fest set for May the 4th. River Run will begin at Upper County Landing. We'll offer the paddlers the choice of two takeout points, 11-mile takeout point at Pick Farm Landing, a 16-mile takeout point at J.C. Landing. No charge for the event, but each participant must sign a participation waiver before the paddle begins. Need more information on the paddle? You can find that on the Tourism Board website, waynetourism.com. The Jessup Porch Fest is a music festival held on the porches and lawns of historic homes and churches in the old town neighborhood of Jessup, bordered by Brunswick Bay, Wayne, and Plum Streets. Set for May 4th from 1 to 5 p.m. Musicians and entertainers will be performing, allowing visitors to enjoy music from different venues, traveling by golf cart, bicycles, or on foot between the different host sites. Anyone interested in performing or hosting should contact Heather Altman at the Wayne County Board of Tourism Office at number 912-427-3233. Or they can come by the Jessup Train Depot. Again, two great events planned for Wayne County, the Altamar River Run, and the date April 13th, and the Jessup Porch Fest, the date May the 4th. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, Center, a great day.